So what does the weakening of the Indian rupee mean? What are the solutions? Joining us now, very special guest. We're joined by the former Reserve Bank of India Governor, Mr. D. Subarao. Remember, it was when Mr. Subarao was in the RBI chair about a decade ago that the rupee again had plunged. Now it's plunged even further. I appreciate uh, you joining us uh, here, Mr. Subarao. The Indian currency weakening nearly 6% this year putting it on the threshold of 80 rupees per dollar for the first time. Trade deficit has risen to 25.6 billion in June 2022, 62% higher than June 2021. How badly do you believe the Indian economy is affected at the moment, especially with the external factors, what's happening in Ukraine and, in, uh, and global inflationary pressures? Well, it's... Uh, the the Indian economy is certainly going through a difficult phase like every other economy in the world. You referred to the external situation, the fall in the rupee about 5 to 6 percent over the last one year. The fall has been particularly steep over the last two months. And that's happened because of two reasons. Capital outflow and current account deficit. Uh, why is foreign money leaving India? Throw your mind back to two years ago uh, when the pandemic broke out. Every major economy in the world, including the U.S., Europe, India, unleashed an enormous amount of liquidity into the system. That money, unleashed by rich countries, was looking for a return, and it came to emerging economies like India and other countries. Now, as the U.S. and Europe are raising interest rates mm -hmm. because of inflation at home, that money is going back, putting down the pressure on the rupee. The other reason, of course, is current account deficit, which is risen, as you pointed out yourself, uh, because of higher cost of imports. As an economy, uh, we import more goods and services than we export. In other words, mm -hmm. we spend more than we earn. Mm -hmm. And the, that, puts the, uh, that, that makes the demand for dollars much higher than supply, and that puts a downward pressure on the so for both these reasons, capital outflow and the rising current account deficit, the rupee has weakened against the dollar. But you must also note that the rupee has strengthened against other currencies, other hard currencies like the euro and the yen. And, you know, the RBI looks at what they call the real effective exchange rate, which is the exchange rate of the rupee we serve each uh, the currencies of 40 trading partners, mm -hmm. and that's slightly overvalued. So I don't think it's uh, it's uh, difficult. It's difficult, of course, but I don't think it's an alarming situation where on the external front. So would you say we are actually in a better position today compared to 10 years ago when you were helming uh, the RBI? And remember, then we had the 2013 ta taper tantrum crisis, then inflation also was very high and there was enormous yes. pressure at the time because of global financial conditions uh, with current and fiscal accounts were under stress. Do you believe things are better even though India's foreign exchange reserves have declined from a peak of $642 billion as of October 29-21 to now $590.50 billion in June 2022? Do you believe we are in a better position or do you believe if the rupee weakens further it will be reason for alarm. Well, first of all, I want to say that the situation today, like you pointed out, is quite different from the situation in 2013 during taper tantrums when I was governor. Uh, let me give you two or three important reasons why that is so. First, the exchange rate itself. There was a lot of pressure built up in the exchange rate back in 2013. It took over value. Today, I think the exchange rate is more or less closely tracking fundamentals. So there is not so much pressure built up. The second reason, again, what you pointed out, our macro fundamentals today are certainly not optimal, but they're certainly better than what they were in 2013. Fiscal deficit was high and continued to be high for several years, leading to 2013. Today, fiscal deficit is high, but if our fiscal credibility is higher also. Mm -hmm. Current account deficit was about 3% year-on-year -year for several years, leading to 2013. Today, the current account deficit was quite low for the past few years. Uh, this year, it's expected to be high, but I hope it's going to be one-off. And the most important reason why today's situation is different 
is because of our war chest, the foreign exchange reserves of about $600 billion. Mm -hmm. By any metric, that is a very, very credible and uh, substantial war chest of reserves which should inspire confidence in people who are trying to attack the rupee. So I would think we're quite better place today, uh, mm -hmm. both in terms of the fall as well as in our ability to defend the exchange. But there are those who are saying the rupee could now go down to al almost 82 per dollar. Uh, do you believe the RBI needs to now step in aggressively or not? I don't think RBI should step in aggressively. I think RBI should allow the rupee to follow fundamentals. I don't know about 82, the figure that you're quoting, but if the fundamentals dictate that the rupee should fall to 82, I think the RBI should allow it to fall. However, what RBI should do is to engineer the trajectory of the fall from what it is today to 82 rupees. Because if the RBI tries to defend the exchange rate against fundamentals, mm -hmm. that defense is going to be futile. It's going to cost us in terms of reserves, but eventually, the rupee will go back to its level. So I think instead of having pressure built up in the exchange rate, I think the RPA should allow the rupee to depreciate, but only intervene in order to make sure that the trajectory is smooth and there's no volatility. The, the other concern, of course, for the RBI, uh, uh, Mr. Subara, will be inflation. It continues to remain above acceptable limits. Uh, do you believe that th there is need for further tightening, that you can't have, as some call it, uh, policy inertia? You're going to need to push even harder, uh, as some countries are doing across the world, including the United States, a continuation now of further monetary tightening. Is that inevitable? Oh, most certainly it's inevitable, because inflation has been above 6%, the upper band of RPS target for the last six months, and by RBS own estimates, is going to be higher above the target for the rest of this calendar year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and what, what, the, what the RBI looks at is the real repo rate, which is mm -hmm. negative now. So it's got to be positive. So I believe there is much more work for RBI to do, further tightening, further withdrawal of liquidity, mm -hmm. uh, in order to bring inflation down into the target band first and then to 4%, which is the mean of the inflation targeted band. So I believe further tightening is inevitable. So net-net, what is your biggest concern for the economy going ahead and what's the biggest opportunity? Well, apart from exchange rate and inflation that we talked about, I think the biggest concern for the economy is unemployment. Uh, you know, unemployment situation is quite bad even before the pandemic. It's gotten much worse as a consequence of the pandemic because it's hit the lower income segments, the most vulnerable people who lost their jobs, their incomes, their quality of life. And it's not picked back up by any metric. Unemployment problem is still high. But if you take the percentage of people right. employed, the total population, or the proportion of people in agriculture, by any metric, Unemployment problem, which is quite bad, has become much worse. So I believe that is the biggest problem of the economy. And the biggest opportunity certainly is uh, what's happening around the world today. Uh, supply chains moving out of China. Uh, the opportunity there is for India to occupy that space and also to manufacture for domestic consumption for exports in order to generate jobs. So I believe the biggest challenge is unemployment. The biggest opportunity is that that we have the capacity. India is unique among countries in the world that we are demand, we are supply constrained. There's always demand here. And that is going to be our driver of growth. So I would say our opportunity is our demand. Both demand okay. economy and demand outside. Mr. Subarao, You've given us, uh, in a way, the big picture, which is really what our viewers need, and, and a voice of sanity amidst all the noise around us at the falling rupee at the moment. I appreciate your joining us here, sir, on the news today. Thank you so much. Thank you.